Today we're going to talk about fuel cells, I think. I mean, are, are they the future of uh, personal transportation? Or just some something that's always going to be the future? Which, <laughs> I mean, they seem to have been the future for a long time, so it, that might be the case. However, before we do that, I have to go to Tesco's. And I really don't want to go today because the nice weather has come to an end. It is raining and horrible outside and I just got my car cleaned. It's only been cleaned for a few days and now it's going to get all dirty again. Oh well. I'm going to suck it up. We've run out of milk which means I can't have any more of my lattes and without lattes I just cannot function. So. We'll go do that and then we'll talk about fuel cells. Fuel cells are one of those technologies that just keep, keep cropping up when it comes to uh, the future of zero emissions transport. And I, I personally think there are some major unanswered questions when it comes to trying to actually use fuel cells to uh to move us to the sort of green pastures of zero emissions the biggest problem initially when you look at it is cost and and cost obviously it does come down it comes down with you know mass production so that is a problem that might fix itself over time but at the moment a fuel cell stack is a comparably priced with a big battery for an electric car like a tesla so okay you know, the batteries will probably come down in price, the fuel cell will probably come down in price. So that's kind of like a, a draw. Then you've got performance. Now, I personally think performance is a hands down win for, for electric cars. Fuel cells are priced on the amount of cash it you know takes to create a fuel cell that will do one kilowatts worth of power. Whereas batteries are priced based on their capacity which for any sensible ranged car means that the amount of available power is virtually limitless. That's why the 85 kilowatt hour uh, Tesla Model S can produce just the most insane amounts of power, like 400 kilowatts. You know, it, the only limit seems to really be sort of how long you want to produce that power for because uh, of heat um, dissipation and um, and, and how, how much power the, the contactor between the battery and the drivetrain can, can actually handle. So I would say that was a clear win for um, batteries. Then you've got the refueling time. Now with refueling time, we've got, I, when you talk refueling time, you're basically talking two different types of refueling. You've got the day-to-day -day refueling, and then you've got the road trip refueling now day to day i would say a battery wins because you just drive around all day you woke up with a full battery you get home you plug it in wake up the next day it's full again with a fuel cell every few days you've got to hunt out a, a fuel cell a gas you know a hydrogen station and refill so that one is a win for batteries but on the road trips it's the other way around with road trips you've got a fuel cell it takes you probably 10, 15 minutes in reality. Whereas it, with an electric car, it could take half an hour, even 50 minutes, depending on how much power you want to put in. So that's gotta be a win for the fuel cells, definitely. Then let's look at the cost of that fuel. Now, I know that Toyota is giving hydrogen away free for the first three years to its Toyota Mirai owners. Well, that doesn't seem like a massive surprise to me. If they didn't, I don't think anyone would buy those cars because the fuel is pricey. It's pricey if you get it from uh, methane. It's very, very pricey if you want to get it from renewable energy, which you kind of hope would be the point. So when it comes down to price, electricity is miles cheaper. It just is. Now let's look at the cost of infrastructure. I've read it on the internet, so it must be true that the cost of a suitable hydrogen refilling network to cover the whole of the US would be something like half a trillion dollars. At the same time, to provide all of the 
superchargers necessary to fill in the gaps between people's houses, you're talking about 4 billion. So even if we call it 10 billion, you know, to sort of make up for the fact that some people will need on street charging and, and other solutions like that, you're still talking 10 billion versus 500 billion. It's got to be a win for batteries. Now let's talk about the longevity of the drivetrains. Well, everyone knows batteries degrade as you use them over time. So if you've, you know, got an 85 kilowatt hour battery to begin with, you know, you leave it 10 years and do a hundred thousand miles or so, and you're probably going to have 80%, you know, 85% um, state of, you know, battery capacity remaining. The fuel cells, however, they also degrade over time and they don't lose range so much as I understand it, they lose performance. So what started out as a reasonably sluggish Toyota Mirai is going to turn into a very sluggish Toyota Mirai, losing, I don't know, 10-15% of its performance over a 10 year period. So that's kind of like a, a draw. What about the future? Technology is always moving forwards. I'm quite sure that fuel cells are going to improve with time. Yes, they'll improve a bit. There is one small problem with fuel cells, and that is that the technology is based on hydrogen, and there's no getting around the physical limits of hydrogen. You can never, you know, there's a theoretical limit to everything. With hydrogen, the problem is that it's not very dense, and it's extremely reactive. It makes metal brittle very quickly. It's leaks out of just about any valve man's ever managed to create. So what that sort of adds up to is you're not going to have a 2000 mile range fuel cell car unless it's hauling a great big trailer behind it because there's just no room to put the hydrogen. Batteries on the other hand, well they also have a theoretical limit. But the reality is we're nowhere near that theoretical limit with our current generation of lithium ion batteries. So there's probably a pretty good chance that a thousand mile range EV would be achievable in 10, 20 years time. So that's a win for batteries in my opinion. Time to have a look at the scores. What have we got? We've got on the battery side and the fuel, aha, uh -huh. right, uh, seven and three. Well, there you have it folks. I'm pretty confident that the future of cars is batteries and not fuel cells. Right, so I'm not, I'm not even gonna get started on the, the practical realities of owning one of these cars. I mean, it, I can't imagine how difficult it would be to own a hydrogen fuel cell car, but you would have to do it for the love. You really would. That's my personal take on the wonder of fuel cells. Do I ever think they're gonna be the future of anything on the road? No, not really. I hope you've found today's vlog post interesting. If you have, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and give it a big thumbs up. And I'll see you tomorrow for the next installment of my daily vlog. Bye. There's a reason why Elon Musk calls them fool cells. And it's not because he's a big fan. <laughs>